I'm going to show you a thing and then you can guess what the tutorial is. Did you guess it? It's the bubble popping. That's what I think is cool. But it turns out if you take this and speed it up a lot, the quick bubble popping looks a lot more realistic than having it for one frame and then removing it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we're going to talk about that later. So recently I've changed my default scene so that when I open Blender, it's already in cycles and there's a sphere and everything. So you set up your scene and then you save startup file. Either way, I am using 4.2 alpha. And the reason for that is there's like extra features in the material that are going to be useful for actually making a bubble. So bubble material, you're going to see that now there is a thin film option option, which basically lets you make what looks like a bubble. We'll, we'll get to that. So first thing is first, we're going to enable maximum transmission so we can see through it and make it fully shiny. So we get this bubble thing. By the way, if you have an HDRI, make sure you have transparent glass to make it transparent. Other than that, we want to mess with the IOR, which is how much light bends when it goes through it. But it turns out like an IOR of like 1.22 or something like that makes it look a lot more like a bubble. And additionally, in this thin film, you're going to see we have a second IOR. Before changing this, I'm going to change the thickness and you want to bump this really high. So let's say like 800 or so. And you you can see this is without and this is with it just adds the bubbly soapy color at which point you can now play with the IOR and like get different looks but I think this is a good start okay we got our soap bubble material super easy and now let's do the simulation which is the interesting parts I want you to imagine that there's kind of like a force that starts at the bottom and moves its way up the bubble and what this does is it's going to like eradicate it's going to get rid of the bubble as it goes up and then on these strips it's going to spawn particles so as the bubble disappears it kind of sprays soap and water and stuff like that we're going to delete geometry, which gets rid of it. But I only want to do that as we move up the model. So I need the Z component, which we can check if it's like greater than or less than some value and put that in the selection. And look at that. We have a bubble disappearing. I'm going to do it the other way. Should be at minus one keyframe. Let's say we go 60 frames down and then up to one, or I guess 1.01 keyframe. Let's make this 70 frames. And okay, so that's our bubble disappearing. Now, if you're seeing these jagged edges, the easiest way to fix that is add more geo and smooth the boundary. So let's add some geometry. So subdivide mesh is going to kind of help. So in fact, if we kind of like isolate this border over here, we can blur only on those coordinates. And this should be pretty easy because we kind of already have the info we need. So I'm going to add another less than this one's going to stagger a bit behind. So again, negative one keyframe, and then positive 1.01 keyframe, but in between just like add a bit of an offset. So let's do point one, I can view what this looks like, switch this to subtract. And now we have kind of like this area isolated because it's lagging a tiny bit behind. And by the way, this is also how we're going to spawn stuff. Either way, for these values, I want to do smoothing. So I'm going to set position. For that position, I'm going to blur. So I'm going to basically smooth out the original position. So you can see as I increase these iterations, it slowly smooths it out. So this is before and after. It kind of smooths it out on every single frame. Technically, I only want to blur this selection so that it doesn't blur things that I don't want to blur. And now we're actually pretty set up to actually spawn particles. So let's do that. That's going to be a simulation. The simulation is basically going to spawn and then move particles. So distribute points on face. What are we distributing on? Basically this deleted sphere thing and join the particles with their like previous iteration. So if I do this, you're going to see it basically spawns particles everywhere and then just kind of adds to them. But I only want to do it on that selection. We have that strip. So let's put this in the selection. And now we have particles spawning as we go up. Additionally, when they spawn, they should kind of move outwards so we can store the direction. So if we want it to go outwards, it should basically go on the normal kind of the direction that points outwards of the sphere. That is basically going to be the normal. So let's make that a vector, store the normal. We're going to call it direction. And then on every single frame, we can just set position. So we're going to offset the position by this named attribute, which is the direction, which goes way too fast. But you can see that's kind of the idea here. So all I need to do is kind of like scale this down. So if I make this like 0.1, you're going to see that it's like much more contained here. I want to add a bit of randomness so they're not all moving at the exact same speed. So I can just do a random value between like 0 and 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty good. I do want to nerf that a little. So first of all, you don't want anything to be at 0 because then some particles won't move. So we're going to go from 0.01 to 0.1. And then I can kind of nerf this a little by multiplying it by like 0.5. So we're making it two times as slow. I'm going to speed it up a little. Okay, so to see what's actually going on here, we don't want these water particles to go on forever right after they kind of burst very quickly after they should disappear. So additionally, I'm going to store a integer and that integer is basically going to be the frame that it was spawned on. So we know when this thing was born. And then we can say after five frames, delete it, right? So I can delete geometry now and I can compare the current frame number to that like named 
attribute. So named attribute, the integer, by the way, I need to rename this, I'll call it frame. And then all I need to do is see like how long has elapsed. So I'm going to subtract one from the other. So this is basically the difference. And if that difference is greater than let's say five, so five frames have elapsed, then we can delete that geometry. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, now they're kind of dying off. So that's good. Just like we randomize the speed, I also want to randomize this like death value. Just, just like real life, not everybody dies at the same time. That, that, that's great. Three to like seven, maybe we can experiment with this. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, that's not bad. Just want to change some numbers. First of all, I can bump up the density that will spawn more particles. And second of all, I think I want them to actually move faster. And to see what this looks like, we can now actually simulate. Make sure to save the file. Bubble.blend. It's going to be available on Patreon if you care. Click bake. And look at that. That's pretty good. As mentioned earlier, if you remember, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. What is Skillshare? It is the biggest online learning community ever, ever conceived. It is a platform to learn any digital art. For us, typically we care about 3D animation. I just have a hunch. On top of all the normal courses that Skillshare has had to offer and still has to offer, they've added learning paths. And you can think of this as a curated sequence of lessons that flow one into another into another. And the one I want to talk about is Blender for filmmakers and production designers. And this learning path is basically about CG and live footage integration, which is what I've always liked the most. I remember even in high school, that was like my thing. So we're talking about green screening, mixing live elements and CG elements. And learning stuff is always a good idea, but especially since summertime is on, not on the horizon, it is here. We have an extra motivation to spend that time to learn something. You can of course check out Skillshare, but I have an offer for you. The first 500 people to click the link down below in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can just have it. And now back to popping bubbles, I guess. One thing that's gonna make this look significantly better is these particles are huge, like weirdly huge. So I can set point radius and make that like five times smaller. So now there's like really tiny particles and that already looks a lot better. And I think this is also something we can randomize. So let's see, zero to 0.01, change the seed, connect that here. Only other thing I wanna change is these are very like uniform, like they all come out from the normal, which makes sense because that is what happened. I just wanna randomize these a little. So instead of adding a random value, this time I'm gonna add a different source of randomness. So it's a little smooth. So a noise texture, I'm going to center this. So instead of zero to one, it goes from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And I can basically add their contribution here. So we have the normal plus some randomness. And then because we only want it to be like a direction, I can normalize this so that it doesn't have different magnitudes. Maybe I can like scale up the effect of the randomness. Maybe this is four times stronger. Oh yeah, wait, we didn't re-simulate. Duh. I think we need to play with the scale and stuff. So I'm going to experiment. So I think I've hit the sweet spot that I like with these settings. So we have our particles spawning and that is almost the full effect. I take this set position. I join these together. And now you can see we kind of have both, but it looks kind of weird. And that's mainly because it, there's this kind of like perfectly flat line where it's being cut, but that kind of looks weird. So I want to distort this so that the boundary is more like that. Well, if we're deleting by the Z coordinate, all I have to do is distort that Z coordinate if I want it to change. So I can take a noise texture that is going to be a source of randomness. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to subtract by 0.5, but this time to kind of mix these together, and this should be the coordinate system. Instead of like adding these, there's a special operation in mixed color called linear light. So linear light these together. And now you kind of have this nice distortion where I can bring down the scale so it's not as intense, maybe bring down the detail. I just want it to be really smooth so I can scale this up by maybe 30%. And that looks a lot more natural to me. If you're not seeing that it's like fully closed in the beginning, you can just kind of like animate this distortion where in the beginning there is zero distortion. So it starts off the same, but as we progress, we get more and more distortion. So something like that. And let's see how this progresses. It goes all the way up and good. And I should mention this kind of like delayed thing we made does work with this distorted coordinates. So that's good. Okay, that's already looking much better, but it's still like missing something. It's just like a sphere disappearing with particles. I think one thing that's very important is you want it to look like there's like distortion going on here. In fact, as it goes up, there should be kind of like this waviness where it's kind of disrupting the surface. And we can do that by just kind of like offsetting it by the normal based on like a sine wave. So instead of using this kind of like sharp cutoff, I want it to be a bit smoother than that. So if I use the subtraction, you get to see I have kind of this like smooth thing, but I'm going to make this a custom parameter. We're kind of doing like a soft one that says like how far away are we from the boundary? I know we've gotten very messy here. So let's actually clean some stuff up. So this whole part is basically our delete function. So I'm hitting a control G to kind of turn this into a node group. So this is delete. This part is like the offset of the particles. So control G, I'm going to call this maybe direction or no, let's just call it offset. This whole part is just kind of like picking the direction. And this part in the beginning can be our like coordinates with distortion. So I'm just going to call this coordinates and look at that. That's much cleaner. So take a look at that. This is what we changed. And now that we have kind of our smooth thing, I can use this to distort the coordinates. So I'm going to set position to offset. I'm going to offset by the normal direction, which is going to just kind of inflate this. But I want to do that kind of selectively. So I'm going to scale this by our custom parameter. So you can see this is definitely 
doing something. The reason it's behaving weird is there must be negative values or something. I don't know. So just hit clamp. Okay. So <laughs> it, it's definitely like the right idea. Of course, I want it to be wavy. I can like send this through a sine wave, something like that. You can increase the frequency by just like multiplying the input. So as we add more and more here, you can actually start seeing this like waviness, multiply it by a tiny number. So now you can see we can actually kind of like control this. But to make it look more kind of dynamic, you also want to offset by adding. So multiplication is frequency changing. Addition is what's called a phase change, where as you add, you kind of get this kind of effect over here. So I'm going to animate this relative to time, which I guess we can make move a bit faster. So let's multiply this. OK, so that's a little better. That That is an improvement. And by the way, if we change the surface the way we just did, we want to make sure that this is what is emitting particles. So instead of this, now that we've done our distortion, this is what is emitting particles. I think we can do a bit better where like on top of all of this, we add distortion like on top of everything. At the very end here, I'm going to set position by basically what ends up being like a noise texture. So noise texture and making this less intense by scaling this down and to make the detail kind of low frequency, which is actually what we want. Usually you want high detail here. We want the opposite. I'm going to bring down the scale. That's actually the big one and maybe also bring down the detail. So before, after that adds a bit of something and you want to make sure that this in itself is evolving. And I think a good way to do this is we're going to take our position coordinates and just like we're animating this going up, so too can we animate our coordinates kind of shifting up and down. So you can see it kind of flows up the surface. So we start this off at zero and then on frame 60. Let's go a bit before so we can see what's going on. I'm just going to shift these coordinates a little. OK, that looks much better to me. So maybe at the end here, we do the exact same thing we did where we blur our position so it doesn't look so sharp. So something like that, that is going to really kind of put it all together. Set shade smooth, kind of like wrap this up here. Of course, I want to emit as many particles as I can. So let's uh, multiply it by six. So what, what is that? 300? In my head, the more particles, the better. Yeah, that, that looks about right. I think the only thing that makes this look ridiculous is the size of the particles. So you can actually make these really, really tiny. Like because we have so many of them, I think it's going to look good. So maybe let's multiply this by 0.7 so we get rid of 30%. So these particles in themselves should have a material. We can start with the bubble material and see what that looks like. It's a little hard to tell that anything is going on here. So let's add a new material. I'm going to call this water. We're actually going to have water droplets where we don't use any of this thin film. And I also bring down or bring up, I guess, the IOR to 1.33 since this is the value for water. And then I can swap this over to water as just kind of like a final thing. I think we need it against a black background. By the way, make this fully white and same with the bubble material. Make that fully white. So to add a background, what I can basically do is do this in compositing. So you do an alpha over. So this image goes over the color black and you're like, I mean, you're only going to see that on render, except now there's a uh, feature where you can enable compositing in the viewport. So now I can actually see what's going on. Let's kind of disable this so we can see what's going on. I think we want an IOR very close to one, which will add minimal light bending. So maybe like 1.05 maybe. And then let's see if we can bring this up. That is way too intense. I don't really know how this works too well yet. So I'm kind of learning with you. And I think another layer of detail we can add is kind of like really, really subtle normal mapping. So use a noise texture, which adds this and then run it through a bump node so we convert it into normal information. Bring down the detail. So it's kind of hard to tell, but this is with and without. It kind of just distorts this and I can significantly bring down the strength. And now kind of the thing to wrap this up is some motion blur and stuff. So because we're viewing it this way, I want the camera to be significantly closer to the action. I don't want this to be top to bottom because that looks boring. I'm just going to rotate this a little. And now let's add some uh, depth of field because we're very close to the bubble. So I can bring down the f-stop to see what's going on and then play with the distance. I think we want it way lower just to kind of tell what's going on. I just want the front of this to be kind of in focus, I guess. So something like that. Go to rendered view. That seems to be a bit intense. So let's multiply that by two. Add some hexagon blades. And that isn't too bad. And once I ran this through some compositing that I like, so very basic node network, you can see it right here. Um, I think it looks really, really good. I think the trick is to really like bump up that motion blur. Don't be shy. Let's bump it up. Light it up. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> Whatever. OK. OK, so I think this is the final look I am settling on. I'm going to make the original blend file available on uh, Patreon if you care. And that's it. Hopefully you learned the thing.